Okay, guys, so we've uh, we've come to Cookham in uh, Buckinghamshire. So we're doing this bridge. We've got Terry and Paul here, Nigel and Aaron, Kirsty and Michael up here in a minute. We've got Nicola here and first Paul, pulled that up. Now, I'm not too sure. We're going to have to tap it off. It does look like a 50 cal bullet, but it seems too heavy. But we'll, we'll try it. Then we've also got this Ooh. little. It's fancy. That is, I don't know if it's off an old, uh, like a salt cellar or something. We'll clean it up anyway and see what it is. Oh, I like bit, that. I was going to say, that's a little fan, bit fancy, yeah. isn't it? I like that. Right, oh, Nick, let's try it So, first belt plaque of the day. Um, there don't look to be much on there, guys. We'll clean it up. It's surprising sometimes. And on the back look, always check your crud. There's something there. So obviously we'll have a look at that as well once that's separated from it. You never know what that could be. Thank you, Paul. Well, I've had the spoon. Kate's had the spoon. I've had the fork. So, oh, and you've had a knife. She's had a knife as well. So, but you can't start the day without getting all the cutlery first. <laughs> Just found that. Yeah, that handle. Island, I wonder if it was off an ammo crate. You never know. And then we can turn yeah. around and pour. Ooh. Piece of chain there. Decent bit of chain that is. And some kind of a uh, large washer. I've had a. Portuguese Volkswagen look. I'll just go in the scrap and I'm not taking them out. Yeah. And uh, that funny shape thing. I don't know what it is. Probably just a piece of all shoe, no my look, but we'll take it back and always we'll check your crud. I've got a sad iron then, but it's not, it's just a little piece of something. What you got then? Michael has had the find of the year. Really? Yeah. What? <gasps> He's a Martini Henry. Oh, oh, oh my god. That Hang on. Hang on, he's took my breath. <laughs> 1860. No way. Oh god, Michael. Oh. oh my word! That is the best condition Martin Henry I've ever seen. At that, I can't believe it. Well done, bro! Boom! Ah, it's with a PV. Ah, oh, it's an arrow. Looks like an eight. Oh, something. It's got a crown of bloody arse. I'll tell you what, Michael. That is in immaculate condition. That is amazing. Can't believe it. I can't believe it either. The Martini Enfield was officially adopted by the British Army in 1895. It was intended to be a cost-effective way to upgrade existing Martini Henry rifles to the new, more modern 303 calibre. Apart from the British Empire, the Martini Enfield was used by several other countries, including Australia, India and South Africa. It saw action in various conflicts during the late 19th and early 20th centuries, including the Boer War and World War I. Like its predecessor, it's a single-shot rifle, meaning it has to be manually loaded after each shot. On a closer inspection, we can see that this particular rifle is a Mark I. 
The difference being the Mark II would have had a brass pin through here. And the Mark IV would have had this steel band here with a hook that went into the Mark IV receiver. The Martini Enfield Mark I was designed to accept the P188 Mark I bayonet, which was a socket bayonet commonly used with the British surface rifles at the time. It also featured an adjustable ladder type rear sight, which allowed soldiers to accurately engage targets at varying distances. You will also see that on this Martini Enfield, these proof marks. The PV surmounted by the Lion indicates the gun uses smokeless powder and was manufactured in Liege, Belgium. And the R stands for rifle, indicating the type of firearm, while the crown on top represents the British crown. However, there might be some confusion regarding the A-proof mark and the Peron Inspector's mark, which indicates testing and approval in Belgium. The Martini Enfield was a later variation of the Martini Henry rifle, which was produced in England and converted to use the 303 British cartridge. Some of these Martini Enfield rifles might have been sold and used in Belgium, hence the Belgian proof mark. The Martini rifle was not manufactured in Liege, Belgium. It was originally designed in the United Kingdom and manufactured primarily at the Royal Small Arms Factory in Enfield, England. It is possible that some Martini Enfield rifles were assembled or refurbished in Belgium and received Belgian proof marks before being distributed or sold internationally. As for firearm manufacturing in Liege, Liege has a long history of arms production and is renowned for its gun making heritage and was home to many arms manufacturers. The Martini Enfield's design elements influence later firearms, particularly in the development of single shot and bolt action rifles. These innovations played a significant role in the evolution of military rifles leading up to world wars. Despite being a relatively short-lived military issue, the Martini Enfield remained in service for several decades due to the sheer number of Martini Henry rifles that were converted to this new configuration. And their robust design and historical significance makes them sought after collectibles today. Right guys, so uh, we're moving from this bridge now, we're going to go to a different location, but there's a bullet tip. Oh. And it looks like a seven, it could be a three-hour three actually, but don't that look like it's at the bridge, the metal bridge? I should imagine it'd be a bit more squash than that, but it's got an unusual bobble on the end. It's definitely a bullet tip, you can see there where it's been sitting in the shell. So yeah, nice piece of history, and I'm going to go, I'm going to give that to Paul Phillips because it's just a tip. Next we change location and move to Marlow, which is around five miles away from Cookham. Let's see what we can get. It's got an old key on the chain. Well, Michael's really on the ball today. Look what he's got there. 1924 bolt black. I think he's having a good day. <laughs> One end 
and a spoiled the other. So I hope you can see that. So I don't know. <laughs> car keys I might as well come back up on the bridge see what Glenn's got we got Bab oh. so found a little jeweler's hammerhead oh no why look at that nice isn't it yeah uh, bad I love it I love it <laughs> little key bad oh my phone's going oh sorry about that about back 1923 <laughs> oh, you know all crudded up Oh, that's brilliant, Bab. Bad. I don't know if that's off a bit of webbing or what. Yeah. Um, I'd say it's World War One-ish. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what it is, so I'm going to take it back and clean it up. Is the camera shaking, guys? Because mm -hmm. we're on the suspension bridge. How about that? I don't know what that is. Ooh. I do some kind of lens or what, but it's old. Oh, comment if you know, everybody. It could be off the old street signs. That's you know the ones that go yeah. around the fifth yeah. day, like third to one hour and the dots go around here. Yeah, yeah. So, look at that. I'll have a few more goes on the magnet and uh, we'll have to call it a day. Finds Roundup. Hello everybody, welcome Peaky Dippers. And uh, we went to Cookham Bridge, didn't we, Maria? Yeah. And we went to Marlar Bridge. Yeah. And we didn't get a lot of footage that day because uh, we had Kirsty and Marco with us, but I'll come on to them in a minute. We had Kirsty and Marco with us and uh, the camera was in two different places. So, right. So we did have some finds, we had some little bits and bobs. First of all, before the finds, I'd like to give out a shout out to Tom Owl's Treasures, is it on Instagram? Uh, TikTok. On TikTok, sorry. Um, he's a metal detectorist and uh, he watches a lot of Peaky Dippers, a bit of a Peaky Dippers fan. So, big shout out to you, Tom Owl, and um, I'll be looking at your stuff as well. He's had some good stuff metal detecting, so that's excellent. We love treasure hunting, that's what it's about, and finding the history. So, yes, going back onto the Cookham and Marlow Bridge, um, might have had the best find of the day, didn't you, Mira? Oh, yes. Uh, I'll tell you what that is in a minute. Well, you'll probably know because of the video, but uh, I'll explain about that in a minute. So I'm just going to show you what we had through the day. We didn't do too bad. We do apologise about the length of the video. It's only a short one, guys. Um, Marie's told me to yap for about seven minutes. That's no problem <laughs> for me because I can talk a glass eye to sleep. <laughs> so let's have a look. Let's have a look what we've got. And um, there's a few things I, I didn't realise what there was until I cleaned them up. So we've got some car keys. I'm not going to sit here and tell you they're making a model because I don't know. Some car keys. That's how much I know about cars. And they've got four wheels. And you put oil and water now and again in them. Found this. We was by a bit of a galvanised bridge. So I think that's just obviously where they've cut it off and it's dropped in the water. At first, I thought it was an old ashtray, now like out of a vehicle. Oh, yeah. But no, nah, no, it's not. <laughs> we had a shotgun shell. Live. These, believe it or not, aren't illegal to own. I don't like them. I don't want them. This is just going to go into the amnesty bin 
for the collab uh, on the 20th, Sunday the 20th of August, which is only like three weeks away now, isn't it, right? Oh, that's gone quick, isn't it? It is. So if anybody wants to bring the knives, the bullets, parts, guns, whatever, put them in the amnesty bin on that day, feel free, bring them along, get rid of all the stuff. Believe me, don't keep guns or gun parts in your house. Bring them to the club and get rid of them while you can. Because it's better you get rid of them like that than somebody finds them in your house. Uh, we've had... Now, this was my first pull and I thought it was a 50 cal bullet at first. But um, as I was tapping the crud off, it is solid and it's like an old chisel, uh, like a little punch. Oh, some going, yeah. It could have been used to put in uh, holes in, in, into belts, stuff like that. We had a little key. Can't be a little key, can you? No. Um, I've got a bunch of keys and they will be going to Karen Crag. I'm going to be giving them to her on the collab die because she collects them. Um, so that's another one towards it. Got a little. I think that's the top of a screw, a big industrial screw of some kind. I've still got to clean some of this up. This here is a little glass lens and obviously a metal bottom. Um, not too sure on that. Um, I thought perhaps in the, in the old um, speed signs from back in the down the rivers. Yeah. I was thinking because they used to have them all around the number, didn't they? Then yeah. when the light hit them, they reflected. But I don't know, if you can let us know what that is guys and what it was used for, feel free. We've got this piece, this will come up like on the first throw with that, what I thought was a 50 cal. And um, at first, because <laughs> my imagination, I thought it was off one of my mats, Maria. Yeah. But it's not. It is just a draw pull. It's like a little draw pull handle. So, pretty decorative. Probably brass, counted. You can see the brass there, look. But, yeah, so it was nice and decorative, so I kept it. We've got a boot iron. Um, this is obviously from out the Obnal boots back in the day. A lot of people used to fix their own boots, go to cobblers, and the boots had iron pieces in them, and not like they are today, where you just throw them away. You repaired your shoes, even if it was 10 times. We had a piece of this. We don't know. It's off a belt of some kind. It's off some kind of a buckle. Um, that would have gone round there. I don't know what would have been after that. But it is weird. You've got the two teeth here for the belt to go through. I don't know whether it's military, whether it's an old uh, off an old shoe. You know, um, from back in the day. I don't know. I think it'd have gone that way, to be honest. Or is it just a very old belt buckle? If anybody has got an idea on that. Feel free to comment. Pulled up a plain bar black. And I pulled up one good bar black, which is this Excuse one here. Excuse me. <coughs> oh. <laughs> right, right? Yeah. You're, frogging, you're not frogging your throat. Ooh. We've got um. a 1923 bar black. Nice. Um, a red one. The red one's more collect most collectible out of the lot. Lovely. So, yeah. Um, it's still got a very big crude build up on the back, but I think I'll just keep it like that. Because it is only enamel, and if we start tapping like that too much, it'll break. So yeah, I'm happy with that. You can never beat finding a belt plaque when you're on the Thames, oh, even if yeah. you don't find nothing else. Um, I have these two things now. I'm wondering if these are some kind of draw pulls as well. I'm going to have to get some Coca Cola on these and really have a go clean them up. But you can see there that they've got there's like two things sticking out the holes and then there's they're coming through that way as well now there could just be old washers with nails and screws on i don't know but i'm not gonna chug that until i find out what it is um it could even be some kind of horse probably where i don't know but i'm gonna keep that and clean that up before i throw it then i found it out I found an owl for Oxfordshire. <laughs> it's right, we get some weird stuff going on in our house at the moment. Um, I'm not going to go into that. But yeah, um, there we go. So we've got an owl. Whether this is off an old building sign, when they used to put the individual iron letters across the doorway, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But we've got an owl. And it's probably for 
nothing significant I've done. <laughs> <laughs> but to be fair, we did have a good amount of scrap out. So that's the main thing is clearing the waterways. Yeah. And that's the why the cookie crumbles sometimes, it isn't is. it? We have to remove all this stuff to get to the older stuff at the bottom. Yeah. You know, and that's why Magnificent's going now. Marie found a giant needle. Sewing needle, look. I didn't know what it was. It's, I think it's just a mooring pin. Oh, right. And okay. there's the eyelids at the top. It's an old one. Really? <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. I've seen, seen better days, hasn't it? But yeah, that's an old mooring pin. Or I'd say. Um, can't think what else you before, but there you go. So the find of the day goes to Mike. Uh, Michael, who comes out of us, Kirsty and Michael are an amazing couple, everybody. You've seen them on the last few videos. Very close friends of mine and Marie's and Steve's. And uh, they're wonderful people. And uh, they came along to Cookham, uh, First Bridge, and oh my god, I couldn't believe it when I seen it. He had it. an amazing day, didn't he? He did. He had a Martini Enfield. So the Martini Henry, if it was a Martini Henry, it would have been an absolute calibre where he could have perhaps got it cleaned up and kept it and stuff like that um, providing on the date, ball war um, but we found out it's a Martini Enfield so it's, it carries a 303 uh, projectile bullet so that makes it illegal so it's had to be handed in unfortunately which absolutely kills us because all that I don't do guns, I'm not a collector of guns um, but for some collector, the historical significance in that gun oh no. is it's amazing. Gutting, absolutely gutting. And to think that it's probably gone to a cop shop and chopped up or put straight through a smelt or whether it... I don't know. I, I'd, I'd hate to say what the police do with them. I mean, do they get sold privately? I don't know. I'm not chucking any accusations out there. But it's a shame because that piece of history isn't a piece of history where the police are concerned. It's a gun. Yeah. So it's had to go, it's had to, it's had to go, it's had to be signed over, so to speak, so it's a shame, but it happens, we've had guns in the past where they got historical significance and they've had to go. But the police did say that, um, that that is an historical thing that they send some of them to, if, they, if there's a... Uh, yeah, if they think them worth yeah. historically keeping them, then they will send them to an historical... There's somewhere that they send them to yeah. or something. But yeah. whether they do or not, I don't know. I'm just slacking the police off. Please do a brilliant job when they come out to us. I can't say no bad about them. Uh, there's good and bad in everybody, but there you go. Uh, so, yeah, big shout out to Tomo Treasures on TikTok. Go across and have a look at him, guys. Go and uh, have a look at his metal detecting finds. He's a lovely bloke. He's, he's even more lovely because he really likes pig nippers. We called you a legend. <laughs> Well, I don't know, you've got end on the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he called me a legend. But, uh, no, he's a nice bloke, he's a genuine nice bloke. He's a Scottish man. Uh, and, uh, I know up there they've got a lot of history with the metal detecting. So go, go and have a look, guys. He's, he's got some good stuff. Other than that, um, we're going to a nice place this week. Should be plenty come out. Um, other than that, that's it, guys. So next time you'll hear off us, obviously, he's... Uh, the, the live on Sunday look out on the live it won't be long before we do some kind of giveaway again we are getting our heads together on it guys but we're that busy at the moment we are going to have a week without the bout a couple of weeks without the bout because we're not getting much magnificent done so put up with us guys thank you for supporting us and big love to all of you by order of the Peaky Dippers which I haven't done for quite a while by order of the Peaky Dippers I shall see you on Sunday on the live about 3 o'clock and then the premiere the week after. See you later, guys.